This is the third in a series of short podcasts designed for the families of children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. In this podcast, we will address the question of, how is the chromosome analysis that diagnosed my child different from the research study molecular analysis? The chromosome analysis performed most commonly in clinical laboratories looks at chromosomes under a light microscope. This picture shows how the chromosomes from a white blood cell look when they've been treated with a special stain that makes them appear to have black and white bands. But this tangled mess is hard to analyze. The next step in the analysis is to use a computer program that lines up the chromosome pairs by number, with number one being the largest. You should also notice that each chromosome has a waistband sort of constriction somewhere along its length. This is called a centromere, and it makes the chromosome look as if they have a long arm and a short arm. The convention is that chromosomes are always oriented with a short arm on top. You will also see that this particular karyotype is from a male, because in the bottom right corner there is an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. If the individual were female, there would be two X chromosomes. This picture of the chromosomes lined up like this is called a karyotype. The analysis of these chromosomes is done under the eye of the highly skilled professional cytogenetic technician who first makes sure there are no extra or missing chromosomes and also determines if any bands are missing, added, or rearranged. However, in each of these chromosomes, there are hundreds of genes. There are over 300 genes on chromosome 18. So what would appear to be small change on a karyotype could actually involve a large number of genes. That can be illustrated by this diagram that depicts the structure of a chromosome. What looks like squatty little things under a microscope are actually very, very long linear chemical structures that have been very precisely packaged. The chemical structure called DNA is shown in red and blue. This is the DNA double helix. The pairs of blue chemical subunits are the base pairs. So you can see this chromosome can be thought of as a long string of base pairs but this string is wound around proteins shown in green like beads on a string. Then this string of beads is wound into a coil. Then this coil is looped around and around in daisy-like loops, all together forming a very highly packaged structure. To illustrate just how much information is actually packaged into a chromosome, let's look at chromosome 18. On the left is a karyotype that you've seen before. To the right of the karyotype, and shown in red, is the scale in terms of the chemical subunits or base pairs of DNA. Number 1 is at the top, and number 76,117,153 is at the bottom. The numbers to the left of the red scale are 10 million base pairs, 20 million base pairs, and so on. To the right of that, each of the more than 300 genes are shown by white lines you can see that they're not evenly distributed along the chromosome. There are gene deserts and gene clusters. This means that a certain distance along the chromosome cannot be equated with a certain number of genes. So in order to help think about how much we really know when there is an abnormal karyotype result, let's use the phone book analogy. Here we have a pair of San Antonio phone books. They actually do resemble chromosomes in several ways. They have a p-arm, the region with the black edge. They have a centromere, where the tab is, and they have a long arm that even has bands. The phone book on the left is a normal phone book, just as a chromosome 18 below on the left is the normal chromosome 18. The phone book to the right has a missing piece, just as the chromosome 18 below it has a missing piece. When you look at the two phone books, you can tell for sure that one has a missing piece. You can also tell for sure that the missing section is in the long arm of the phone book. You can even know for sure that the missing piece is toward the end of the long arm. But you can only make an educated guess as to just where the phone book deletion is and exactly how big it is. It looks like the phone book deletion might be somewhere around letter P, but that's a guess. This is very much like the chromosome analysis. From the picture of the chromosomes, you can be sure that the chromosome on the right has a missing piece. You can be sure that the missing piece is from the long arm of the chromosome. You can be reasonably sure that the missing piece is from, if not the end of the long arm, near the end of the long arm. But this is just a guess. 
and there is no way to know just which genes are involved in the chromosome change. The molecular analysis, on the other hand, allows one to know exactly where the deletion is. It's like being able to open up the phone book and see that the deletion goes from the entries beginning with real to the entries beginning with tree. We can precisely know the deletion down to the letter. Here is a molecular analysis from that same individual whose chromosomes you saw with the telephone books. The type of molecular analysis we use in our laboratory is called microarray comparative genomic hybridization, or array CGH for short. Some labs call it chromosome microarray analysis. It's the same thing. This analysis does not show you actual pictures of chromosomes. What you see here are diagrams of the chromosomes with the molecular data points placed on the diagram. The panel on the left shows every chromosome. The pink bars next to the chromosomes show which chromosomes have copy number changes. The X and Y show changes because we use DNA from a person of the opposite sex as an internal control. So the only chromosome showing any aberration here is chromosome 18, which has a blue box around it. The chromosome in the blue box is shown in the center panel. The center panel shows only chromosome 18. Here you can see the actual data points as black dots when they are within the normal range and as green dots when they show one copy instead of two. The pink bar shows the region called as a deletion by the statistical analysis program. You can see that this individual does not have a terminal deletion as you might have guessed from the picture of the chromosomes but instead this person has an interstitial deletion. The region of chromosome 18 in the blue box in the central panel is shown in the panel on the right. Let's zoom in on this panel so you can see everything. The scale on the left is the base pair scale. It goes from a position of 59 million base pairs of DNA to 72 million base pairs of DNA. The gray bars of varying lengths with letters next to them show the positions of particular genes. They are spread across the diagram for readability purposes only. This is because at this resolution, if they were all in a row like they really are from top to bottom, it would be unreadable. The black and green dots are the data points. The black dots are within the normal range. You can see that this technique is very noisy and the range of normal is scattered. The green dots are those dots that are present at half the normal amount. The red line and the pink bar indicate the region that the program is calling as present in one copy instead of two copies. From these data, you can easily determine exactly which genes are present in one copy versus the normal two copies. From this comparison, you can see how important the molecular analysis is when we're trying to tie specific genes to specific outcomes.